All right, welcome everybody to the Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday program design review for week two of the new year. As always, we give a suggested warm up in the top yellow box, uh, Warrior Warm Up. So I'm glad to have Jeremy on the call today. Uh, I don't know of anybody better at the Warrior Warm Up than Jeremy. You know, he's been uh, including it in as part of the warm up for the longest time and sometimes goes, uh, goes real deep into it. So uh, the Warrior Warm Ups. Uh, remember, as we go through this, the things that we highlight in green might be where you want to start for one reason or another. Uh, the boxes below the exercise in yellow are to give you a purpose at each station. If it's orange, there may be an exercise consideration there for you to be aware of as a coach because you got to know your room. All right, so let's start at the top. The uh, dumbbell stability ball, close grip press, overhead tricep extension, build up. Okay, you can build up from one on this. You could choose to build up from three when you uh, start this off with people. But uh, you want to teach good form. Uh, what I see a lot of is the, the whole arms are moving, you know, when they're trying to do the triceps, right? So be that coach, come along. You can even tell them, just lay your arm over my hand right now and just bend at that elbow. Uh, that's a great way to do it. You also, the reason this is highlighted in green is because you want to be at that station first. In our extraordinary coaching checklist, it says, hey, the better you start, the better you finish. What are the key three? It could be the most awkward person, the newest client, or the most awkward station. It is tough to grab your dumbbells and lay down on a stability ball and get into position. So be that coach that's there to help and make sure they get an appropriate weight. Power band, iso hold, three-way row. Uh, you know, for me, of course, you know, you can always focus on retraction and stuff like that. But I like this song, Get Low, Get Low. To the window, to the wall. You may want to pause it after that. But... Uh... <laughs> No. <laughs> or have the, or have the edited version. Make sure there's no E next to the song. So you're not you don't want the explicit version. Not the explicit. It does, you know, what's cool about our Apple uh play is that you can actually click on the words, right? It'll take you right to that spot in the song. I know. Uh, last year, a lot of times I was quoting different seconds for people to start off in uh, on the songs, but you could also just bring up your lyrics and just click on get low, get low if you want to uh, play a, a fun song during the demo. Because remember, judge your sessions by the smiles you see. And quite often when we play a little demo song, we get some smiles and that's what we like. Putting the fun and functional fitness. So the kettlebell bio alternating runner lunge to a step up. All right. So what's really cool about this one, you know, you're going to get some good depth as you step back and then you're going to step up onto the box so challenge that range of motion that's what i have down there right making sure uh tell them one degree makes all the difference right if you can get an inch lower get an inch lower right uh then the next one is highlighted orange only because in some locations you got the more athletic agile types and in other locations as soon as you ask somebody to step behind their uh their feet they fall down right so uh you know know your room right if there should be a side shuffle or if it should be a sprint down and back you know, give them that if you got, uh, you know, some people you can work on some agility with or, you know, uh, you got a lot of good athletes in your room then you know, go with it. Right. But, you know, know your room uh, and challenge the pace on that one because it is a pace exercise. Uh, the TRX Pike to a knee tuck. All right. Help. I always like to introduce this one saying, and when we put our feet in the handles, they become handles right because that's a journey word right so we've uh we kind of invented that i think um so help people get set up in the panels not everybody's good at getting in there on their own so be that coach that knows where to start so if we have two coaches in the room one starting over at the dumbbells and one is starting at the trx then uh whether it's a surge a sandbag a fit fighter or a ram uh we're doing uh two cleans and then a kneel to stand so challenge the weight make sure that somebody is not just using like that uh, 10 pound green sandbag to do a clean with, because uh, that's really not much of a clean um, that really require your hips to get it up there. And then uh, as we go into round two, we got the dumbbell stability ball, Arnold press. All right. So challenge weight, give a spot um, on our fun coaching song list. There is like an Arnold motivational thing. So you, you can play that as well. Uh, power band duck walk. Uh, so, you know, getting people low in the video, I think it was Ty Sean. He did a great job. You know, he's bringing his knee all the way to the ground with every step that he's taken. So, uh, yeah, challenge people that can be challenged in that way to get low like Ty Sean did. Uh, kettlebell plyo box, box squat. Provide the reason. Uh, this is something that I'm super excited to have Jeremy 
uh, be part of these calls. You know, he's a program designer. He has intentions behind the exercises that he's putting in. And as he communicates those intentions, you can communicate them to the members. And then you'll have more buy-in for the exercise that you're doing. As they said in the video, too often people don't sit back in a squat. And so this is teaching them to sit back. So as a good coach and a demo, tell people why you want them to do what they're doing. Uh, local motion, single leg, lateral hop, forward, backward hop. So um, that is a balance challenge. Uh, and I put WTF there because whenever it's a balance challenge, it's really what's the focus, right? You can give them a focal point a few feet in front on the floor. Uh, you know, that might be one thing that you have them do. Uh, other things you can do in balance exercises or agility exercise, make sure their core is engaged, right? You know, hold your core type. Uh, so different coaching things you might provide. Uh, TRX suspended, close grip, pull up, challenge the resistance. How do you challenge the resistance? You challenge the resistance by challenging them to use less of their legs, right? And so what does that look like? For some people that need a lot of legs, you know, they got their feet right underneath them. For those that don't need a lot of legs, they might have their feet extended out in front of them. For those that can go all the way in, have them cross their legs Indian style and pull themselves up, right? You know, so whatever that is. Uh, surge, sandbag, fit fighter, ram, plank to push up, and then a drag. All right, so butts down, towel on the back. What I found, uh, we started doing this probably a decade ago. And put a towel on somebody's back and challenge them not to let that towel fall off the small of their back as they pull that sandbag through. Because that is about an, uh, that's anti-rotation for the best form. And also if their butt goes too high, that towel will roll right down their back. And what's really cool about doing that is I might, if I can, I can start there, right? And the reason I'd want to start there is because then the whole set, when I'm coaching other people, they still feel like I'm coaching them, right? Because I've kind of left something there that they have a challenge, right? So they kind of feel like my hand's still on them and I'm coaching everybody else in the room as well. All right. Now we got cardio. I think uh, Sam Jackson invented that word. Uh, that's core and cardio. <laughs> I saw it in a video before. But um, you have a, a leg raise with a hip raise, the quick switch lunges, uh, side plank, hip dip right, uh, A skip right, side plank, hip dip left, A skip left, uh, mountain climbers, and then the squat with the twist. So your work, depending on the time you have left, is 20 seconds or 25 seconds, 10 seconds off. So this is, uh, you know, basically your Tabata finisher uh, with the hidden exercise of the uh, up, down, in between. Um, so. Uh, this is the quote, uh, I'm going to throw in Travism sometimes, uh, do what you can do, or soon you won't be able to do what you used to do, right? And so uh, what we mean by that is I want you to encourage everybody in the room to use the weights that they can, to use the range of motion that they can, to try new exercises, because here's how we get old. <laughs> here's how we lack mobility. We stop doing the things that we used to be able to do, and then we can no longer do them. Jeremy, turn it over to you for whatever you'd like to add. All right. So, yeah, I want to present grief for like the round one. Uh, so anything we have, time when we have like incline, um, stability incline press or a chest press, uh, I prefer to like start there. Um, knowing that that's the most challenging spot for many reasons, right? Because if you have someone that's going to lift heavy, you should want to be there to be your spotter, right? Give them that support to spot them. Maybe you spot by the elbow or the wrist. I prefer the wrist to kind of like guide them with my fingertips. On two fingertips on the side of the wrist and they come up come back down so if they do drop it i can help catch that dumbbell right so um and also finding weights this is where you find that people always like move stuff somewhere different if you're having low selection of 30 pound dumbbells right be the coach to help find that 30 pound dumbbell for that person that wants it get it to them soon so they can get on that splitty ball and get some reps in with that 35 seconds um this is shown with two dumbbell, uh, dumbbells, but you always could utilize one. Uh, stressing, bending, and extending at the elbow joint. I know Travis said on that, right? So anytime we do like a bicep curl, um, a TRX, a bicep curl with a dumbbell, power bands, or a tricep extension, you want to limit the shoulder movement. You don't want to incorporate shoulders. So when you do an extension, you want to go behind the head. So again, folks, uh, bending at the elbow, extend the elbow, right? So having your hands there, um, I might even sometimes put my hands at the outside on their elbows so that they keep their elbows in, not flared out. So you don't want your elbows here. Do one of these, have them in as you get that tricep extension. So I might have my hands at their um, at their elbows so that they, they feel like they're locked in at 90 as they come down back up. Um, we used to call these skull crushers, or I guess a gym term is skull crushers. 
you might want to go slightly above the head on these ones, not actually at your skull, because you'll see people actually smack their head on that one. So they were called <laughs> skull crushers for a reason. That's a boy called them skull crushers. That's come on slightly behind the head instead of right at the forehead on those. Um, so yeah, great, a great place, especially if you have two coaches. You have one coach try to get there. Um as a set goes to help people find their dumbbells, get in position. If someone is doing heavier weight, to be there to support and spot them. And then go to having the pipe to push ups. Always people who have issues. I like the happy baby method. Like when you put your feet in the fan, you lay on your back first and you hook your feet into the fan those and you roll over. It's very simple. I could probably have the same recorded video of that. Uh, he called it the happy baby because your legs are in the air. You know, like, I don't know how the gynecologist appointment works, but I guess it, it, it reminds people of stirrups. But that's... Uh -huh. so, that's a good video. Let's have, a, <laughs> let's have him record that. I like it. I so like he it. calls it the happy baby method. So people get a little laughter out of that one once he says, happy baby, right? So you get the happy baby, flip over. It's very easy. Most of the time, people don't even know what happening anymore because they got the happy baby, baby method uh, down packed for any seat in the sandals, uh movements all right so uh iso so with longer, longer with uh iso three-way rows for longer work weeks like 45 40 35 you know i like to see more like eccentric or time under tension so right here you're going to be time under tension really focusing on keeping that elbow locked to your torso so you know you have the isometric hold of the lats being involved engaged the entire time even as you come out you come back in you're squeezing you're squeezing you're squeezing you got that double row box you want to make sure you're staying there Chest up, head up, not rolled over. All right, bring your shoulders back. Retract the shoulders as you hold that. TUT, stress that. You want to get the blood flowing to your lats. So that's why we hold it there the whole time. You want to see members come here no matter what. They're going to be here, here, here. But the purpose is to be under tension. So bring your elbows back. Hold it there for the whole time. As you release, come back. Squeeze it there. Release, squeeze it. And then come back and squeeze. Really get the activation of your lats. Uh, Kiryoka, yeah, challenge pace, but also challenge slow, slowing down, right? Because it is, agility is important, right? So people, if you don't work on it, you lose it. Coronation, if you're not working on coronation, you lose it. So having people, even if the Kiryoka is a, is a challenging movement, because anytime you bring your feet or a lateral movement in general is, is, is challenging. You see people tend to trip up very often when we do any type of side shuffle. So slow down, walk it out. You can even walk and twist your hips as you do karaoke and then uh, come back with a sprint or a light jog. Um, now again, know your clientele. If you see somebody that, all right, they don't need to go full speed with this, but they can work on this at a slower pace, encourage them to do that, all right? If it's someone that absolutely should not be twisting and putting one foot behind the other, Know that person and be like, listen, do a lateral shuffle or do a lateral step or just stick with a forward motion of going uh, with a sprint down, sprint back. Just know who you're dealing with within that session. Uh, because you, I mean, and I'll say right now, like, knock on wood, ever since I've been doing this, I haven't seen many injuries. I haven't seen um, when it comes to exercises. But I'd say right now, I see people fall all the time on a lateral side shuffle all right it's gonna happen so pick your feet up pick your feet up pick your feet up do not let the carpet gators get you why we call it carpet gators because the Amara heights location had carpet so people get tripped by the carpet all the time in that location so don't let the carpet don't let the floor get you pick your feet up when you're doing a lateral movement okay um so that's very important challenge pace if they got it go faster if they don't slow down but still give it a chance give it a chance to really get that rotation of the hips going and all that so it's very important with agility uh two cleans and you understand you can play like bad voice going down your knees from back up like you're getting arrested so it's a, a fun one to have on there bad boys bad boys so that's a good one to always play um Auto press, same thing. You know, again, dumbbells are laying all over the place. Dumbbells get moved. So if you can get there just to be that person to say, hey, what you want? I see people looking all the time. We were looking for 25. Be the extra eye to find some 25 dumbbells for that person. Get it to them so they can get in that workout. Hey, you'll take a seat. I'll find 25 for you. Bring it to them so they're now they're in a position. Because the hardest, one well, of the hardest part is to have the dumbbells. Now you got to try to sit down on that stability ball, too. That might roll under you and you might fall backwards. So have them sit down and you give them the dumbbells yourself uh, once you find them for them. So I'll always say anytime we have... A stability ball and a dumbbell have that be one of the stations you start at first to help them find their weights and get and, and if they need a spot, you spot them, right? Um the duck walks, 
you know, with, with the uh, uh, Travis said before, is a, a good for hip mobility. If you're able to drop that knee down towards that ground, you're just getting some more hip mobility work on here. So it's a corrective exercise, um, uh, a mobility exercise as you do that. Now, if that is a lot on their knees, then drop the knee down. Just stay low as you can to have that resistance of having that bit man um behind you okay pull you back go to when you can't go anymore and then walk back in control with it don't fly back uh because again that that remorse you might trip over and and bust your butt we don't want to see that uh pile box yeah so you know this might be pg-13 for some people but i always say no flat asses you know i don't know how many times i see people like when they squat their butt looks like this right it's like you shouldn't look like that you should imagine you're sitting on a toilet or sitting down into a chair. When you sit down, you push your butt back into that, right? So there's again, there's a focus on driving your hips back and putting the weight into the heels. You'll also notice too that um, you might be a little heavier on your box squats here and there because you have a surface you're coming down to, so you're not just fighting that gravity. You actually have a surface you can come sit down and drive up through your heels. So you might be able to go a little heavier with a box squat, so it could train you to be get used to, used to a heavier weight. Also, a lot more core, so a lot, a lot of more core stability. But as you're sitting down, you don't want to let yourself just go to the box at loose because you're also call that could cause, you know, pressure on the lower back. So you want to make sure you're sitting, engage, tap and go, tap that box, come back up. Um, find them boxes that are uh, that get your legs as close to parallel as possible. Right, it helps you again when you go to a goblet squat to feel better in that motion motion so like working with the box will help you feel the motion get deep sit your butt back and actually help you increase the weight too on uh, with a box squat so um so it's always going to have some that's different to help somebody all right now i know i gotta get this deep so like hey if they're like so on a box squat and they're only getting their butt down to like like right here Give them a lower box to challenge them to get the, their thighs closer and parallel as possible. If they got to go body weight, go body weight first just to get it filling down. But I get into they, they'll be able to add some type of load to this one because they'll feel more comfortable knowing they're going to a surface and not just air. Mm -hmm. uh, agility. So going forward, like I want to, I want to like kind of enhance our our descriptions down low when we talk about our movement patterns you know we have our vertical push vertical pull um i want to sort of add a more rotation anti-rotation um stuff that peter Swiss really stressed about because we should always work in rotation everything we do we turn around we're working this so if we're not focusing on rotation um you could see injuries happen right people might twist their back more because they're not used to rotating so having um rotation more focus in our in anti-rotation too for more core stability where you see with the the uh the plank drags you want to really focus on keep your hips aligned it's not about rocking your hips widen the base you need to widen the base heavy towel on the back to show that you're you're, you're keeping that core stable as you get that bag of uh, that that drag um the four backward hops you know like i look at things like so we have our, our movement patterns and we have like things that are should be like just a, a general focus. Agility is one, you know, agility is super important. Um, power, right? Power, we do it with slams. Um, this is actually a, a good problem too with that lateral hop. You're gonna actually get a balance challenge. So balance too, you got balance, you got power, you got agility all wrapped in one with this movement, okay? So people actually are so weird, right? I had a lady uh, come in that she had a bunion removed off her foot and then she had to have a, uh, a ligament repaired in her, her her ankle. So she um she had wearing a boot and she was like, you know, Jimmy, I was like, I was damn Jimmy, why we always gotta do single leg stuff. And she was like, I was so grateful that we did single leg work here for this long because you know how much I had to hop around my house on one foot that I was prepared to hop around because we do all single leg stuff here or uh, single leg hops, whatever like that. So as much as you might see like why are we doing this, like you never know when you're gonna need to be doing single leg hops around your house. Uh you know if you're in a boot or on a boot, you have foot surgery. It helped her out, right? So, like, we trained you for life. You never, we might not know at that point. Might be like, oh my gosh, another single leg balance. Oh my gosh, another roll. Um, but there's always a reason behind it, all right? So, uh, that's again a balance challenge there with that. Uh, the close grip pull up. Um, 
Anytime you do a pull up on a suspended pull up on a TRX, I always say act as if there's an anchor on your hips, keeping your butt low. So you do not want to come inverted. You want to, you do not want your your hips to raise. You want to keep your butt down towards the ground. You want to be in an L position. So you should look at L as you pull yourself up. Look at L. So your butt should stay low. Once you go here, there's a different movement. You want to mimic as if you're on that pull up bar, going straight up, getting that vertical pull, coming right back down. So it should be here. Now, if you have to lighten the load, walk your feet in, bend the knees but still focus on keeping your butt low as you come up, back down. If you have some Jedis um, in your gym, you know, hey, have them go up to the pull-up bar. Hold it right here, what they call this commando pull-ups. So it's that same movement, going side to side. If you have some Jed Jedis in your gym, that's the way you can do Like, hey, you don't want to go to the TRX traps, you know, get a few at the pull-up bar um, on your own. And then if you got to regress down or come back down to the uh, TRX, you can do so. So you got, I know most locations had their TRX traps hook to the pull-up bar, so it was a quick little hop up there if you want to hop up. Um, I wouldn't stress it because I wouldn't have to get, you can't get the pile boxes out for this particular work workout either because you have them used. So if you have an emergency class, you know that can hop up and do it. Challenge them to do that, but don't teach it. Don't teach it. That Be that be a, a coachable moment for you to coach somebody up. Um, then I touched on the plate to push up, man, anti-rotation, heavy, wide base. Uh, you're going to see that it becomes a little easier to keep your core stable with a wider base. Guarantee if your legs are too close together, you're going to see a lot of rotation of the hips. You want to avoid that wide base. Drop down to the knees. If you are rotating your hips, it's still going to be just as beneficial to drop down and really focus on core stability. Come out of your knees and get that drag. If you're in a high plate, you're going to get some more stability work too because you're going to hold yourself up on one arm. So you're getting shoulder stability there too. There's a lot going on in that one movement. So um, that's the cool thing about this, man. The cool thing about all the moves we do, There's it's not just like you're, you might get some isolation, but it's typically you're hitting every, you're hitting full body with every exercise that we do. So uh, that's the beautiful thing about this program and how we do things here. And it's very important to stress that. Like you're not, there's very hardly, I mean, if we do a chest press, if we do a chest press and a stability ball, you're using core, right? You gotta have your hips up, you gotta hold yourself up there, you're using core. But if you're doing, if you're doing heavy weight and you're on a bench, then you're just mainly focusing on your your chest, your secondary muscles, your tricep. But like, with this, it's, it's always, always, always just more than just one body part, one thing being done, mobility, stability, balance. There's all that stuff always incorporated in the movements that we do here. So that's like the, the beauty, beauty behind the programming. Really good. Really good. Um, and, and by the way, guys, you know, it's mandatory six station this week. So the only thing you need to figure out your location is if you need a seven station, right? If you need a seven station, you know, then we can always have fun with that. Um, you know, everybody's favorite B word burpees or, you know, yeah. some easy body weight stuff. Yeah. Um, I love the alligators in the floor, Jeremy, uh, you know, reminding people to pick their feet up. And also you heard Jeremy today. Uh, he quoted in the last video, he quoted uh, Greg cook. Uh, he's quoting Peter twist. Uh, you know, our program design, uh, I'll just use an Isaac Newton quote. We see further because we stand on the shoulders of giants. Uh, our program design, uh, Jeremy's always going to the best resources, right? He's talking about the world's greatest physical therapist when he was talking about the server carry. He's talking about Peter Twist, who's been involved in coaching Olympic teams and Olympic athletes and all that kind of stuff. So, like, we got great resources for the stuff that we're bringing. And I would encourage you in the new year, uh, if your coach listening to this, to say, you know, who am I studying as a coach? you know, what great coaches am I studying so that I can become a better coach? Because mm -hmm. we've tried to associate ourselves through conferences and books and courses over the years with the top industry leaders. And so uh, that's great for you to share, Jeremy, where some of these ideas come from, because hopefully that makes people feel even more. Yeah, bought. I'm not pulling this out my butt. This is, <laughs> you, know, you know, I'm listening to the, to the best. I mean, some stuff, some stuff you might be like, okay, this is a Jeremy movement, but like, the purpose behind them, you know, I I think of I think about these these uh industry leaders, you know, Dan John, Gray Cook, um, Peter Swiss, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Todd Durkin, you know, our two our two one ratio with the push and pull, um, you know, just our just the energy level with you know uh Martin Rooney. So everyone that we we've heard about about and we know, um, so just taking their best practices and putting it into our programming, just is you know, it's just nice to see it all evolve. Yeah, really good. Really good. And I love what you're saying about single leg. Hey, in life, as we climb stairs, as we step up on a curb, 
uh, you know, there's many times that you don't even realize that you are getting into a single leg position. So single leg activities are important for exercise. And P.S. I know you said that about the finisher too, but like that is, a, you don't even think about it. Like, no, there's eight exercises. There's actually nine because the purpose of it is getting down and up. Because a lot of times, like, you know, you know how many people that fall, you know, people don't fall usually from like, people don't die from like, or they, they actually die from the fall. Like some that, when they fell, they something happened to them that they couldn't get up and that would cause over time, whether they broke something within that fall. But the hard part, they, they, they can't get up, right? You see that, especially with older clients or not older clients, but older people in general. So like getting out to the floor and I encourage like, you know, we have some people that are, that have it sometimes a hard time going out to the ground. It's like, hey man, I don't even care if you miss the exercise. At least one, one movement, one time within this finisher, I want to see you get down to that ground and get back up. I don't care if it takes you 25, 30 seconds, just do it because the only way you're going to do it, the only way you're going to get better at it if you do it, right? The only way you're going to get stronger is you pick up heavy weight. The only way you're going to get more lean if you want to, you know, in increase your weight, decrease your, uh, decrease your weight, increase your reps, right? Just things like that to know if you want to work on better on getting down to the floor, the only way you get better way, the only way you get better getting down to the floor is by actually getting on the floor and getting back up. So great tip, great tip this week, you know, and let them know about the hidden exercise. Uh, you know, I, I used to like that crocodile hunter, Steve Irwin, he'd be like danger, danger. There are a few things more dangerous in the world than lacking the mobility and the strength to get down and off the ground. That is a very dangerous position to be in in life. And if you can change somebody's life by helping them reestablish that strength and mobility, uh, you've just done an excellent thing as a coach. So that's really good. All right. Well, we're going to, we'll invite you guys to come to a deeper Q and a, uh, I'm going to stop this one and uh, I'll record Q and a separately.